G'day everyone. So we, uh, we're back here in the shed. Um, we're in, I guess you would call the museum part of the shed. All the tractors lined up against the walls. Uh, basically we just uh, did a bit of a shuffle. We hadn't put the 744 away properly since uh, Currumburra a few weeks ago. So we got that put away now. Um, we moved around, had to move the 135 and the Fergie and that. Um, and basically this weekend, I need to cut some firewood up. So we're just gonna set the uh, saw wrench up on the back of the Fergie. And uh, the Fergie actually, the carby seems a bit funny. It's got a bit of crap in the carby, so we might take that off and clean it out. And um, hopefully it get, runs good for us this weekend. So the way the saw bench works is obviously we have to take this T-bar off, which is the, uh, the tractor, uh, the pickup hitch. So we can put the belt pulley on, which bolts on around the PTO. It's got a top link bracket mounted to it, uh, which is what attaches to the top link on the Fergie. And uh, so it goes on, you pick up these bolts here, four bolts, take the cover off the PTO. And uh, yeah, that's how you put your saw bench on. I'll um, set up a time lapse while we do it. And uh, then I'll explain how it works once it's on there. So here it is. So obviously we've got the belt under the belt pulley. You can see it's bolted on around where the uh, PTO goes. And then, uh, so if you look here, it is a genuine Ferguson. It's a bit hard to read that portion up, but that is a Ferguson plug. It's a genuine Ferguson saw bench. This was actually my grandfather's. My dad used to use it with him when he was young. There you go. It was actually my great grandfather's, and it's. Managed to stay with us all these years. Um, we obviously gave it a big tidy up, tidy up the bearings and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, we'll give our Fergie a good run. Those who haven't seen the Fergie before, this is my, or our uh, 1954 Ferguson TEA20. Uh, I came across it when I was, I think I was 14, something like that. And uh, we brought it home and did a, well, a decent restoration on it. It might not be the flashiest one around, but that was near on 15 years ago now. Um, it still runs really well, although we do need to have a look in the carby. So we're probably going to do that today, and then uh, hopefully I can use it this weekend. While I'm there working on the uh, carby for the Fergie, which I now have off, Dad, you probably saw him in the background pushing tyres around. He's going to get these 38-inch, uh, 38 13.638 tyres off these old 135 rims uh, that are clearly rusted out. <laughs> we managed to pick them up fairly cheap secondhand, and what they're actually going to do is we're going to take the 28-inch rims off the back of our 44K row crop, and we've got some 38 inch rims with nine bolt hubs and all that. And we're gonna put them on the back of this and we think it's gonna stand up and look really good. Um, the 28 inch rims were an option here in Australia. Uh, they're an Australian casting. Um, you could also get them with the taller rims and we'd like to see it standing up on the, on the correct size rims. So I think that'll look really good. All right, so here we are, got the carby on the bench. I said I haven't had a part for a long time. Looking at the internals of it, I'd say we, uh, did rebuild it, put some new bits in it when we uh, first did this tractor up. Um, as I said, it's been like 15 years since we actually uh, built this tractor or restored it or whatever you want to call it. And uh, we can't remember what we did and didn't do. So 
let's pull it apart and see what it looks like inside. I'd say it's probably just dirty or got some varnished fuel in it. Here's the car we all pulled apart. That's the bottom half, that's the float bowl. Um, yep, that's the float bowl. That's the top half, that's upside down, so that goes on top like that. All right, there's the screws that hold together. This is the float, the float, which is conveniently marked top, goes in there, that's easy enough. Now, it was all pretty dirty. It's been on the tractor for 15 years and never been off. It's always run really well. Um, it just sits around a fair bit, so I'd say it's just got some stale fuel through it, um, so that makes it not quite as happy. Um, I just pulled it apart and cleaned it. Um, I'll give you a basic rundown of what we're looking at here. So this is the air intake, comes from the air cleaner. That's your choke, goes to the choke leaf on the dash. And then the air comes up, goes through this Venturi, and then the fuel actually gets goes through... I'm gonna get this wrong. One of these two, one will be for the idle circuit and one will be for the fuel for when it's running. I'd say the bigger one for running, don't know. Someone will probably tell me I'm wrong. Uh, so anyway, the fuel is, as the air goes through this Venturi, it sucks fuel out of this nozzle in the middle, goes up through and goes up through this hole. It's, as I said, this is the bottom side of this. Uh, that is your throttle blade inside there. Uh, and this is your needle and seat. Um, I just had it out so I could clean it, just to make sure. Um, if you're working on other carbies, most carbies, especially older carbies like this, all work in a very similar way. They're all updraft. Um, they're fairly simple. As you can see, there's not much inside, just a lot of little holes and orifices that you have to make sure are clean. Um, but the main thing is, I, I always reckon, is obviously the, jet, the, the jets need to be clean. And also the uh, needle and seat can be a bit sticky, but they're not always captive like this one is. The needle can't fall out of this one. I'll try and hold it in a way where you can see. See, the needle itself is captive inside this, and it's a one-piece steel. Um, the fuel comes in through there, comes down around the needle through there, comes out. Um, but there's a lot of carbies where that's not the case. So when you go to uh, pull the float ball out or pull the carby apart, depending on how it all works, you can drop that and it's not good. Um, if you lose that, you've either got to try and get a carby kit and if it's something a bit older and a bit rarer, uh, that's not always easy. Um, but in a case of a grey Fergie like this, you could just buy a new one. Um, but once again, you can just, if you're really worried about checking to see if it'll work, you can hold that, blow in the end like so. I've actually been to the dentist today, so my mouth isn't working properly, but no air would go through it. So, um, yeah. So, I'm happy with that. It's all, there was definitely a bunch of gunk in, particularly under the float there. I've been through, I've cleaned it. Let's put it back together, and we'll put it on the tractor and see how it goes. All right, so Carby's all cleaned up. We're going to put it back on the tractor. It's super simple. There is nothing to it, really. So you've got two linkages on the back here. The one near my finger here is the choke, and the top one, or the, in the bottom of the frame, is the uh, throttle. So you literally got these two rods here. This one's the choke. So you just put it through, put a split pin through it. Same here. That one's the throttle. It comes from the governor up the front there. So put that one through, put a split pin through. Bolt it up on these two bolts. That's the fuel line, and that is all there is to put in the carby back on a Fergie. So I'll uh, put another time lapse and we'll get it. Okay, so I got the carby back on. 
intake pipe, all that back on. Um, you probably saw me in time lapse. I was struggling with the intake pipe. Um, I sort of realised when I took it off that I think I had it the wrong way around. Um, I don't know if that was uh, way I did it 15 years ago or whatever, but um, it certainly fits nicer like this. Maybe I've got it wrong again, who knows. But um, it seems to be better. It just uh, was a bit of a pain playing with the old clamps and the uh, hoses and stuff and swapping them end to end because the carby is a smaller inlet than the pipe. So you got to use that hose uh, on that end and that one on that end. So that was easy enough. We're going to wander around the other side now and we will turn the fuel on. We'll check for leaks and then uh, we'll fire it up and yeah, see how she runs. I'm not expecting it to run poorly, but who knows? I could have stuffed something up. And so fuel taps in under here. Wind that on. There we go. Come over here. Don't see any fuel. What I'll do is I'll open the little tap here. There we go. We got fuel running out. So it's fuel getting through. All right. So we'll jump up on the seat. And I'll run you through how we start it. Uh, so, pretty simple. I think anyone who's driven a Fergie sort of understands how this works. There's your throttle. So I'll just give it a little bit of throttle. Key down there. Uh, there is choke, which I'm not sure if I'll be able to do with my uh, with extra hands. So let's see if it actually needs choke. Gear stick to start, S for start on the far right above reverse. Probably going to need some choke, so let's see if I can just put the phone up there so that I can try and start this thing. I need a hand for the choke, so one hand on the choke, which you probably can't see, but there it goes. I'll do it back a bit. Done pretty good, that's staying cold. The choke's down here and it's off right now. It'll probably run a little bit better with the choke, but it's alright. So. Now I can show you, I'll uh, reach down here and put the PTO in gear. Look back here, you can see the... Oh, I'm an idiot, it was already in gear. Now it's in gear. There you go, you can see the uh, belt fully spinning. And I will now raise the uh, linkage up. And you'll see the shore bench folds up really neatly behind the tractor. Um, I'm not sure if it was ever meant to be used with the uh, canopy, but as long as you're careful and the blade's not spinning, it all slips in nicely. I'll jump off so that you can have a look at it all folded up. The engine seems to be running nicely. As you can see, it folds up really neatly behind the tractor. But, as I said, that blade gets quite close to you, and obviously close to the uh, canopy up there. Uh, so you want to be really careful, because uh, if the PDO's in gear so that you can lift the linkage, the blade is spinning. So what we've worked out you can do is you can lift the blade up, you can lift it up a little bit, and then throw the clutch and pop it out of gear. And then once the PDO is out of gear, you can take the belt off, blade's not spinning, put the PDO back in gear, lift it the rest of the way up, and then you're safe. Um, so yeah, it is a pretty dangerous thing, but that's what happened in the 50s. Everything was dangerous. So, sounds like she's running pretty good. We'll shut it off and turn the fuel off. And the key's down there. Turn this one off. There we go. And then I will uh, set I'll put my phone down, I'll put the camera down, and uh, you can watch it fold down. This is how it folds down. And uh, if uh, the belt was on, it would actually pinch in the belt on time, own, so that would not be flat anymore. There you go, simple as that. And then away you go, you would obviously stand here. Hopefully I'll get some wood cutting done this weekend. So stand here, keep your hands well away from this area where the blade is. You can hold the log against this backboard and just hold it from here. Pass your log along. 
Yeah. All right, now that I've uh, got the Fergie all sorted, ready for the weekend, we are going to uh, get the tyres off this rim. I'm going to give Dad a hand. He's already broken the bead on the other side. Um, he's going to do the same again now. And then, I mean, the bead's basically rusted off anyway. guys well that's our night in the shed um we got all that done on the fergie we got those tires off the uh, the rims the ones we're putting on the uh, massive 44 and um yeah so thanks for coming along and we will uh hopefully get some footage of using the saw bench on the fergie on probably friday i think and then i'll you know i'll probably release it on saturday or something i guess all right like subscribe and all that other stuff thanks guys bye